Oh my God, thank you for celebrating 100 episodes with us. I'm so excited. Uh, hello, I have a celebratory drink available. Let's yes. do this. I'm so yes, excited too. to be here. I brought my mug. Is bitch better because I know you love Teresa just as love. much as I do. Love. She's on my wall of fame. Love. Ingredients is. How many ingredients is are in there? Is there any common? Is there any common in there? <laughs> is bitch better? <laughs> oh my god. We you look amazing. Um congrats on another season of Shaw's. It's so Thank good. You. Thank you so much. I have never felt better. I've been wanting to be Lily Galici skinny since we have been on the air. I'm so embarrassed that I have not given it to you sooner, but I'm just glad that finally, after all these years. You look amazing. What are you doing? I'm doing intermittent fasting and okay. keto. And I started running again. And the quarantine really just, it slowed me down. I weeded everything out that was not either bringing me joy, health, or wealth. And I started writing down everything I was eating at the same time as I was writing a book. And I was like, oh my God, I put way too many things in my mouth. And then all these stories I was writing about my life made me wanna like get closer to MJ. I started writing a book about my life and I'm like, me and MJ, this can't be our final chapter. I have to like try. If I'm gonna try and get back to my 20s weight when me and her were like rocking it, I need to at least try and rock our relationship back to where we were. Yeah, so is the book, what, what can you tell us about the book? Is there a whole chapter on MJ? There's a whole chapter on MJ. The book is called Memoirs of a Gay Shaw. Uh, and it's just stories about kind of like finding your own lane in life when you look different and you sound different and there's no one that came before you that kind of like paved the way and you know it's just stories about MJ and I growing up and finding our way basically. Wow so do you guys talk every day now would you say things are like completely back to where they were? So I don't want to spoil the entire season yes. and give everything away. MJ and I are in a much better place. But no, we definitely don't talk every day like we used to. Okay, but you're building that itself. Building, like. girl, build it. You know, like the pounds didn't come off all in one day. Like I've been doing this since August, right? I started going like committed. I started running like I had a running supervisor that I had to report to that was gonna like dock my pay or something. I was getting up at 5 a.m. with like the zest of life and some weird cosmic energy that my legs could not stop moving. And I feel that way with MJ, no matter what, we're not where we used to be, but slow, goodwill and time. Can't we get back to some new place that's just as good? Right. How hard was it for you to send that text message? Like what actually made you press send? So to give credit where credit is due, MJ did reach out to me after the reunion last year. Mm -hmm. And we started talking again because of her. And then she kind of just stopped responding to me. And I kind of needed to know why I, I was taking it not personally, but it was like, dude, we, we had this good momentum going. What happened? And so I just thought sending the text might be the catalyst that could get us back on the track that I felt was a positive one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm so happy you guys are in a good place. She gets a whole chapter, so everyone's going to be really excited to read that. I mean, would you say the communication's pretty mutual right now as far as reaching out goes? Communication is definitely very mutual. And this old dog has learned a couple of new tricks. I go to therapy every week. And, you know, MJ and I started our friendship as teenagers, unencumbered, no husbands, nothing, right? And like we evolved into these adults with these big lives and we were communicating with one another. I was not even considering Adam at times because like, she and I had this shorthand that dated back pre Adam, pre the whole crew. Mm -hmm. And so it like, I had to learn to 
have an adult relationship with MJ that would work for my husband and like, you know, the whole nine yards. So it, it, this old dog is having to learn lots of new tricks to keep my cool when I hear things that I don't like her husband say. So I can think about the big picture, you know? Yeah, so are the husbands just like not involved in your guys' relationship anymore? I'm sure we're gonna see that play out more this season. You're definitely gonna see it play out on the season. Um, I did not realize what the temperature was uh, at MJ's house. I had hoped that it was a lot um, maybe cooler, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And watching it, I realized, oh my God, it was a lot warmer than I had anticipated it being, and it freaked me out. Luckily, I wasn't seeing that when I was attempting to, you know, reach out and really reconcile. So the fact that the husbands weren't really involved was to my benefit, I think, because I think maybe I couldn't have been as focused to getting back on track because I was hurt by some of the things I heard. I have to be honest. Right, right. Well, how much weight have you lost? I mean, you're you're shedding unnecessary everything. It sounds like. So, how much weight have you? I mean, lost? girl, like I'm not embarrassed to like take my wow. shirt off. Like, there's no tire. I can wear Adam's pants. I have a size 32 waist. Wow. I was pushing. I was wearing 38 waist pushing 40, pushing 40, like go to big and tall. And I'm not tall, girl. Mm -hmm. I would be in the big section. And I was huffing and puffing. It was affecting me. I wasn't feeling physically the way I felt mentally. And I just kind of wanted to like get my body in line with how I felt. And really the nutritionist and writing everything down for a week. Don't change your eating habits. I invite you, challenge yourself. Write every single thing that goes into your mouth down in a journal. And at the end of the week, if you want, have a professional look at it and tell you if you're putting the proper nutrients in your body. And so she's like, what, what are your goals? I told her my goals. She's like, do this and you'll get to your goals. And in September, I started doing what she told me. Uh -huh. I started intermittent fasting. I was very angry in the beginning. <laughs> Little testy. I'm not going to lie. It was not all easy. I, 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 the only thing I can compare it to is friends that were doing things that were changing their hormone levels internally, like my friends. I was a, oof. I was all over the place. My hormones were going crazy but after two weeks it was like oh this works for me it's very structured it made sense i went to a professional who said to me if you stick to this routine by the end you'll get to where you need to be and wow. so like when if you give me a plan oh we're kind of oh there you are okay i think you're back sorry i I was just talking, going, chatting away. I didn't realize you lost me. No, that's good. That's good. So how much weight have you lost in total? And how would you feel about having this hot girl summer? I've lost like 60 something pounds from the very beginning until now. Wow. Wow. And you're done losing, I take it, correct? Honestly, I, don't, I just do whatever I want now. I can eat what I feel like Bethany Frankel. I want to make a line and and be you know i want to sell skinny i want to talk about how you can be skinny at this age and eat whatever you want um yeah, yeah it's like a new thing this is my thing now i'm not gonna be plump anymore oh my god well you look you look amazing you look amazing um thank you let's talk about last night's episode first of all i have to tell you you with the red that red solo cup game with the with the ping pong ball red like Reza, it's called beer pong. Did you not go to college? Come on now. I Girl, was I'm deceased. I'm Persian. You have to remember, there's like a cultural. So imagine like 30 years ago when I was in college, this Persian ass was like an immigrant, you know, like. Was, I was yes. deceased. Okay. So now we, now you know what beer pong is. Totally. Now I'm on board. I'm super down to play. 
Okay. So I have to ask you, because in the trailer, you made a comment that you needed your friends now more than ever. You needed the group. So what did you really mean by that? What's going on? Honestly, like, I was in such a place that <laughs> I was karate chopping all of my issues. I was hammering my weight problems. I was, like, shooting, you know, my anxiety. I was dealing with all my things, and it was, like, the 2010 concept, like, that party of, like, can we put the needle back yeah. to a point where things were all good was kind of just like in my head and I just wanted everyone around me. But I quickly realized you have to meet people where they are. And just okay. because like, I feel like I'm in like Willy Wonka's Wonderland or Xanadu or like I got the secrets to like unlocking my weight and my health and my this, that and the third and Vivica Fox, not everyone in my crew was on board with that plan. So. I started getting obstacles and I just realized, you know what? I just need them, whether we're in Xanadu together or not. Okay, okay. Um, what does Persian polite mean? Persian polite means fake AF <laughs> and maintain respect. Like you just say and do the things you need to do to maintain maintain decorum listen we all do persian polite because we have relatives that we can't shots of sunset style pop off on i can't walk into a family gathering and like pop off on old relatives that are like 70 and 80. i have to be persian polite even if they talk shit to me so like this is persian polite you'll greet someone from across the room that you don't like at all whatsoever but you'll do one of these <laughs> okay Right? Like, you're acknowledging <laughs> them and you're kind of like patting your heart, your chest, like, oh, you know, like, so it's a combo of like, oh, and hello. It's like a little head bow, not a full bow. It's one of these, but I'm not going to walk over to you. That's Persian polite. Okay, okay. By the way, shout out to Golnesa, who is, Golnesa's in the house. She's in the hey, comments. Hey, I was Stop. with, let me just tell you, when you're talking about episode two, my boo, Golnessa, had us over last night in her beautiful backyard, and we watched episode two in her yard, and we noshed on a beautiful spread that she had laid out for us. I hope there were Persian cucumbers there after last night's Absolutely, episode. and they were fully dressed. I love Persian cucumbers, so shout out to Persian cucumbers. Um, you and Nima are going to really look like you're not in the best of places all season talk to me about that so i'm one of those people if you say something to me um later i come back and i say you know what it was me i want to talk to you about my role i was wrong i'm ashamed i did this i can see the error of my ways mm -hmm. i needed nima to acknowledge that mj had the benefit of knowing she was coming to talk to someone who didn't and was not prepared to reciprocate. Mm -hmm. I was not in a good place. Mm -hmm. And like she had the benefit of all of that, but I didn't have that same respect. Mm -hmm. So I wanted him to kind of acknowledge that maybe sometimes, even if you think your intentions are positive, it can trigger a domino effect that can be tragic. And if you don't have all the information, maybe don't get in the middle of something that's so big and complex. Nima was in the getting to know us stages. Me and MJ go back to high school. I'm 40 by the MF in seven, right? 47. I go back to high school with MJ. That's over here. Yeah. It was over here. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like you guys, you're, are you going to get to a better place? Are you working on it? Or are you, can you kind of not really you guys care? to keep watching. But let me tell you, when you're in Xanadu and you want to lose all your weight, fix all your issues, you know, heal all your wounds, you got to know that my ultimate goal, and I even apologized to him, you saw mm -hmm. off the bat, mm -hmm. like in that moment, I felt guilt and regret because I didn't want to talk to him like that. And I was ashamed. And I just, it was such a bad start. That list, 
that crazy list. I was agitated. Yeah. People are pooping when we're getting there. If I had gotten to the house, girl, you know, I would have made drinks out of the grapefruits in the tree. I would have found some straws. I would have greeted people at the door, made them felt welcome. There's a stranger saying hi to me. Girl, I don't know you. Like you said when you were playing tennis with MJ in right. passing. Why is the lady that I met in passing and my friend Mike is on the couch, the other one's taking a doo-doo, and MJ's nowhere to be seen. I was feeling all sorts of crusty. After that list in the shopping spree and the $1,700 I dropped. Yeah, I was like, excuse me, $1,700? I don't think I've said that in a grocery store if I could try. Hello? I could have bought a pair of Louboutins, Mom. That's what I You know, I was like, I could have bought my mom a little, you know, little clutch. I could, I was feeling crusty. No, that's the I was price feeling... of, my, of my gold. Come on now. <laughs> yes, honey. So it just, <laughs> I, I was a ball of nerves. I didn't want to go. And then when we got there, I didn't feel like there was any sort of goodwill. It was like everyone was doing their own thing. So the Nima thing was as a result of him not knowing. I just needed him to say, you know what, Rez, you're right. Big picture, probably a bad move on my part. Although you said some ratchet things, bitch. And I would have said, you know what, Nima, you're right. I did say bad things. And I, I'm ashamed of them. And I'm trying to work on getting to a better place. But I need you to understand. So he said he did. And I think you're going to be very happy with where you see Nima and I later. I think okay. you will. Okay. Yeah, someone just said you could have bought yourself some Cartier, Reza. Come on. Girl, Reza. I mean, seriously. Seriously. Dying, dying. And I was like, there better be some Dom in there at least. <laughs> and I tried, uh, I tried to get everything, everyone's wish list. I really right. did with what I had to work with in a health food store in Rancho Mirage. Health food store. Oh my God. Well, you're literally living your best life and getting ready for hot girl summer. And I can't wait. Um, but I think everyone is here probably to talk about the text messages. So who do you believe? What do you believe? What's your theory? Okay. So can we talk about something called bubble guts? Yeah. You know what bubble guts are? No. No. Have you ever heard your tummy rumble? Like, you know you didn't eat something bad. Why is my tummy rumbling? As soon as I looked at my phone, my hands started to quiver. My, my stomach started to sour. I started salivating and gulping like someone was slicing a lemon, but they weren't. Oh, I needed Pepto-Bismol. Oh. That's how I was feeling. Okay. So I just was like, oh, God. Please, you know, like those things where you can just and it gets sucked backwards because yeah. all I kept thinking was, you know, somehow we're all going to get blamed for this. It's going to be our fault. It's going to be. But I just kept thinking back because I learned from history mm -hmm. and I was around when Mrs. Shoe had Jessica. Um, and I just, you know, I have a good memory and I remember things. And so for me, I was in the, from what you saw when I was sitting with Golnessa and Destiny in my backyard, I said, it felt like when you talk to Mike, you get kind of that story of where's, you know, the cats, you know, have you ever seen that cat video where the cat can watch the yeah. solo cups with the ball and it knows what, I never know where Mike's, where Mike puts the ball. I never can figure it out. I oh. know I love Mike. Mm -hmm. And the same way Golnessa tried to give Mike advice at the grill and it went over his head. Because I think Golnessa really was genuinely being such a good friend and wanting to say kind of like, listen, what if you establish what it is that works for you? Because you kind of know it now, right? We watched you go through some stuff with Jessica. And it was amazing for me to watch my girlfriend because I wasn't at the grill. I was at the table. So when I got to see my friend, I was like, oh, my God, look at Golnessa. Like, fucking go Sorry, effing Golnessa. Like, coming through. Coming right. through with the wisdom. Trying to talk some sense. But Mike was just at that point trying to keep everything, I think, together. And he wasn't there. So... 
with all of that said, I just was very sad and alarmed <laughs> and in disbelief. Yeah. But in my head, I kept hearing like that song, whoop. There it is, whoop, there. Remember that song? Yes. In the, in the end, it goes, whoop, there it is. I thought you knew. So I just thought it was like a song that we enjoyed from a long time ago. And by enjoy, maybe I meant overheard. It played over too many times, and then mm -hmm. it gets stuck in your head. And when it came back around this time, it was like, what club are we at? We need to get the F out of here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what went through your head when Paulina sent you guys, what was this, like 19 pictures or something like that? I mean, were you like been here, done that? Or, or did you want to stay out of it at first? So by that point, I realized that Paulina had set a domino effect that could not be stopped because the text messages went out to me. They went out to, you know, you saw Nemo reading them. You saw Destiny reading them. Right. And you realize that um, it's a lose-lose situation, right? Because you don't want to judge your friend and condemn him, uh, and, but you want him to kind of be maybe accountable. And so he can see some sort of like, okay, here's bad, but here's good. Is there a path from here to here? And what does that look like? And we were kind of all hoping that rising above, some sort of good. It was, for me, on a personal level, I have to tell you, there was a side of me that was thinking, God, did you do this to take my mind off of how hard it is that everyone in the group has seen baby shams and I haven't? Like, are you, like, this cannot, this, it sounds like the, I, it's, it's your, you, you know, you recognize how your friend would talk. Like you see these Dateline specials and like the, the person is no longer here and someone else is using their phone, but the friends and family are like, that, they don't talk like this. Yeah. We were all like, uh. same number of exclamation points. The shorthand is this, you know, stuff like that. So it wasn't about the authenticity. It was more about how do we get our friend to either decide that maybe open relationship or like Golnessa went from that angle and then, you know, you're going to have to watch and see how the rest of us try and like want the best for our friend that we love. Okay, okay. Because the meme going around the Bravo community today is Nemo with the WhatsApp. And what's up with these text messages? Because he said he wasn't on WhatsApp, but Nima Wait. showed us he was on WhatsApp. So Excuse me. I am a member of Shaws of Sunset. Do you need me to pull up the cast only WhatsApp chat that has existed since season one? Oh my gosh. Receipts. Or whatever. Like we could go back. We what <laughs> how, whatever whenever WhatsApp came around, because I may be wrong about the season, but I have multiple WhatsApps with Mike. So as far as the WhatsApp, it kind of was like the iCloud. I just thought this is my friend being very creative. Creative. In That's a good word. That's, you know, listen, some guys just are not relationship guys, or they've been so hurt that they're just, like, afraid to get into a relationship. Like, do you think that could be Mike? Because Paulina seems great. Great. She's, she's a snack cake and a dime piece. She's a great mom. She's beautiful. She yeah. speaks Farsi. We love her. She was a breath of fresh air because we've done seen many, many ladies. And I some some of them I use the term a little more loose. And a lot of them were ladies. Um, but we were very happy when Paulina joined Mike and then came into the circle. We were very happy. Yeah. We love Paulina. We don't want Paulina going anywhere. Do you feel the need to protect her a little bit with this going on, even though Mike's your your guy? You're, you're touching on a very big, big point that you're going to see play out because this situation with Mike and Paulina sets a, and triggers some deep wounds from my childhood. Because if you guys have watched Shots of Sunset, you guys have seen me talk about when my father 
when I was a kid, a little kid, you know, and Paulina has kids. Right. And I was able to like really, and I was writing a book about those times while this was playing out. And for me, it came out like a pus ridden cyst. It just, everything came and shot right out at Mike. So. So we're gonna have to tune in. This, this stuff affects me deeply because of my dad's infidelity. And so mm -hmm. when you talk about Paulina and how I felt towards it, I felt very protective of her in a very strange, taking me way back in the day kind of way. Got it, got it. Do you think, can you see Mike getting married again or do you think marriage is just not for him? Honestly, I want Mike to have whatever he wants. If he wants to have like a Stedman and Oprah type relationship with her, if he wants to get married, my issues with Mike never involve um, the act. It's the cover up, right? Yeah. It's like, I always think to myself, when someone isn't honest with me or tells me like a dog ate my homework kind of thing, yeah, I always think to them, I always think while it's, I'm listening to the story, I think, does my friend think I'm dumb? Like, it almost insults my intelligence. Yes, I know that feeling. And so, and Mike likes loyalty, you know? Like Mike, you saw in the car with Nima, right? Mike is like, I'm your friend. I'm telling you it didn't happen and I just need you to believe me. And so it's, it's hard sometimes because yeah. you love the friend. Yes but you don't love the actions. Yes. And, and you have to, sometimes when you're on your way to a better, cleaner, honest, healthy place, and you want your friends to be there with you, sometimes you have to drag them and they'll kick and scream. But hopefully by the end, it pays off. Yes, I will never forget the time. Just just so we know, Mike, Mike had just gotten divorced and I had just gotten divorced and we went to lunch for an interview and he totally was like, we should hang out. <laughs> and I was like, you are one of those guys. But he was he was super single. I just had to tell the story. <laughs> yeah. And listen, you have to assume I'm on television. Yes. I have a couple of followers and people think I'm funny. And then people send me messages with receipts. Yes. That's what right? he and I were talking about. Yeah. Like, totally. Like, Girls so, slide into the DMs all the time. Yeah. So, guess what happens? Guess who slides into my DMs? All those girls. Yeah. You want to know something? You want to, you want a hot piece of tea? Yes. Give me There's the tea. The young lady whose things I was reading hit me up to tell me it was hysterical. Wow. Wow. I mean, he is a good looking guy. He's successful. I get it. Mike is, Mike is good looking. Mike has the best personality. When you see us out in the clubs and out and about popping bottles and, you know, out, yeah. Mike is Mike. When Mike is doing Mike, there's no one funner. There's no one who will look after you, make sure everyone, especially the women's cups and yes. drinks are full, glasses, everyone. He makes sure everyone is having the best time. Yes. And it's a beautiful thing. He's a good guy. He is a, He's good, a guy. good guy. We, we can tell. So I have to ask you, because I, I, when you were on Watch What Happens Live, Andy said that your reunion may have been one of the hardest ones he's ever done for any Bravo show because of yeah. how things ended. What did you think when you heard that? And did you and him have a conversation ever afterwards? Because it was virtual. We did not have a conversation afterwards, but I know that he had a conversation with Mike afterwards and actually thanked Mike for helping bridge the gap. But when I hear Andy say that, I, I look at it from two perspectives. From the one side, I can understand what he's saying, but from another angle, obviously it has to make sense. What other show do you have where the people will ride or die A1 from day one homies from high school to till today and started out that way on the show, right? Right. So like, and we're still together. If you look at like Real Housewives of New Jersey, which I'm obsessed with, Teresa's an OG, right? 
Dolores, who I adore and love, has adore. been on for a little bit. But where, you know what I'm saying? Like, our, our stuff goes so far back. Right. And it's so, inner, you know, that, yes, when it went south and left, but look at us that we're able to see the good and want better. Like, I gotta, I have to want to tap MJ and pat her on the back for being receptive. Yeah. What was it like the first, did, I assume you've met Baby Shams now, so what was that like when you got there? Don't assume, because oh, okay. you need to watch it play out on the show. Okay. And, and, okay. I can't say that I have. Um, but maybe you you got to keep watching. We got to keep <laughs> watching. Well, season nine has just started, but tease for the fans what they can expect the rest of the season. Uh, every episode is fire. I am literally going to be bringing the fashions like you've never seen because finally I was able to fit in. Designers don't cut for size 40 waist men. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. finally... We have so much fun. It is so much fun. I've never laughed so much. We do the, oh my God. People almost, did you see those trees? People almost died. It was insane. We, we had holistic, we had drugs being burned. Uh, things that like, oh my God. I, it's fire. This is my favorite season. I've never watched the first, I've watched the first episode three times. I watched the second episode two times. I can't get enough of it and I was there. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. So Shaza Sunset airs Sunday night, 8 p.m. I think on Bravo or 9 p.m. Sorry Bravo, I missed the time Central. Yes, Reza, I cannot thank you enough for joining us for our 100. I totally decorated. Girl, if you don't have me back soon, I'm gonna be pissed. I want to come back. Do you remember when we did that photo shoot? Like, God, I don't even know. Maybe like ten years ago, eight years ago, with your weight loss, you lost forty pounds, and we did it at like a rooftop pool. Do you remember that? Of uh, of course I do. In that gorgeous building yes. on the rooftop, Kelly Wurstler had done the lobby. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yes. Oh my gosh, I can't thank you enough. Like it meant so much to me to have you on. You're one of the Best, biggest Bravo celebrities. I'm so happy for you. I am honored, and I will come back anytime you'll have me. Thank you, Thank sweetheart. you. Great well, to hopefully, see you. I'll see you in person somewhere around LA. If not, BravoCon 2021. If I get the invite, hell yeah. I'll be oh, my there. God. I'm sliding into your DMs right now. I love you. Thank you so much. Love you back, girl. Congrats Bye. on your 100th.